My name's Joseph Carter, and I am the Mink Man. When I was a senior in high school, I started learning about the American mink. I was told that mink were horrible, vicious little animals who were impossible to tame. Challenge accepted. I've been in love with mink ever since. I get mink from fur farms and give them a new life. In this new life, my mink live as naturally as possible, even hunting for their dinner the way a wild mink would. So come join me on my adventures as we learn more about this intense little predator, the amazing American mink. Okay, so as you see here, we got the water quite a bit deeper than uh, we did before. It's roughly twice the depth. She's had quite a few repetitions in the shallower water, so it's time to we uh, raise the water level and see how she does. Uh, I'm gonna keep the leash on her, I think, just one more time. She has had a couple instances where she tried to take off with the fish towards her cage, which technically is kind of caching because she's taking it back to her nest. But um, we're gonna we're gonna move the uh, the aquarium next time and actually have it out in the middle of the yard so it's not so close to her cage. A lot of time mink when you're doing caching training they want to bring it back to their home, which that's why we use uh, this little caching box. Is this is supposed to represent her home? But when they know that they live in their cage, they want to take it back to their cage, even if their bed is right here. So next time we do this, we're gonna move the aquarium out into the middle of the yard on the opposite side from her cage. That way she's not tempted to take it back to her cage. The, the caching box will be the only even remotely close place that she'll wanna take it to. So let's get started. Like I said, I hopefully this is gonna be the last time with the leash on. And then after that, we're gonna start letting her do it uh, free, which actually is probably part of the reason she struggles to catch the fish is with the leash on. Um, one thing, we just raised the water level. I'm thinking I probably ought to reduce the number of fish in the aquarium. I think I'll do that just to be safe. So you would think having more fish would give the mink an advantage, right? He's got more options to choose from, but actually it makes it a lot more difficult because for one, it confuses the mink. She'll be going after one fish, another will dart in front of her face and she might switch. Um, another thing that it does is she can't just focus on one fish and wear it down. She'll chase one fish, it'll rest while she's chasing another fish, it will rest while she's chasing another fish, and so on. And they basically relay her so that she gets tired. Kind of the opposite of what like coyotes do to when they're running jackrabbits. They'll have a relay. There'll be a, a pair of coyotes chasing one rabbit. One chases it for a while, the other one rests, and then it takes over while his partner rests and they chase the rabbit for a while. That's how coyotes will sometimes hunt. Um, so basically it's in the opposite. The predator is chasing one animal, then while that prey animal rests, he chases another one over and over again. So it's a lot easier with, with less fish than it is with more. So since we raised the water level, and she does struggle a little bit at the last water level uh, because of the multiple fish, and I think because of the leash, to be honest. So we're gonna take a couple fish out to make it easier for her. Okay, so now we're just down to two fish instead of you know roughly half a dozen like we had before. That should make it simpler for her. She'll have less to focus on. Um, heck, yeah, let's leave it at two. I was thinking I might take it down to one, but let's leave it at two. If she seems to be struggling, I'll cheat, reach in and catch one so that she's only got one left. So we'll leave it with two to begin with, but I'll be ready with the net to help her out by reducing the number back down to one if she really seems to be struggling. So let's see how she does. Okay, little Miss Vila, are you ready to go? Huh, you ready to go? This is quite a bit deeper than before. That's more secure. Yeah, let's reduce it to one fish. Right here. Yeah, that's much better. Ooh, she had it. Oh yeah, see it's so much easier with one fish. Good girl, Vila. Good girl. Oh, good girl. Yeah, I think I was a little too anxious to make it easier. She. I think she'd have been just fine on two fish, but that's okay. I'd rather have it be too easy than, than uh, frustrate her by making it too difficult. So next time we'll definitely have multiple fish 
We'll do it at the same water level, but we'll just increase the number of fish in order to increase the difficulty that way, rather than increasing the water level again. We'll do it a second time, maybe a third time with additional fish. And then, um, and then we'll increase the water level after that. I definitely think now that the water's deeper, especially, it's gonna really help her not having the harness on. I just don't wanna run the risk of her running off to it with, running off with it to her cage or some other hiding spot. So when we have it out in the middle of the yard, that's gonna be another advantage is we won't have that as an option. So we can take the leash off with more confidence that she'll put it in the right place. Now Vila's actually been doing an absolutely amazing job at being consistent with caching. Um, but even though she started out really good, I don't wanna mess things up by getting overly confident and moving too quickly with the training. Even though she's doing well, I wanna make sure I'm going through the steps slowly enough that I'm not risking messing up a good thing. Sometimes when you've got an animal that's a prodigy, it's just learning really quick. People get excited, me especially, that's one of my weaknesses. I get excited and wanna skip steps and sometimes I, could, I can potentially mess up a good thing by rushing things. Um, whereas if I would have just took things a little more slowly, the, the animal who's an exceptional individual would continue to progress at a good rate and not have uh, any frustrating plateaus or, or backpedaling. But sometimes by pushing things too quickly, you create a problem that never would have existed had you just slowed down a little bit. And it's tempting with a prodigy, an animal that's just picking things up really quickly and they're a total natural, it's super tempting to start rushing things and skipping steps. And I think you definitely can do that to some degree. I'm not saying you can't. You just need to do so cautiously and so, so you don't uh, put inadvertently mess up what you've got. And that, when I say mess up, I don't necessarily mean permanently. The animal's ruined forever. I just mean mess up as in you slow your momentum uh, by hurrying, you end up going slow. Uh, my grandpa was a, a horse trainer, as some of you may remember. He was a horse trainer. He used to always tell me, you want to hurry up and go slow. <laughs> and uh, if you hurry to hurry, you're going to end up taking longer and creating more problems. But if you want to really hurry, you want to make sure you, you go slow. And it sounds really weird. It's like, wait, that's, that's like an oxymoron. But in reality with animals, a lot of times when you hurry, you're going to make things slow because you're going to create problems that wouldn't have been there otherwise. Um, now, having said all of that, I can definitely hurry her through things much more quickly than I can an average mink. But I just want to make sure that, like I said, I'm not going too fast to the point where I'm messing her up and creating problems that never would have existed uh, had I been a little more patient. So one thing Justin, oh, let's introduce Justin. I've had multiple requests of introducing my cameraman and I always forget about doing that. So let's introduce Justin. So this is Justin. He is one of our neighborhood boys who comes and helps me. And uh, he's my, he's my little helper who's bigger than me everyone's bigger than me <laughs> yeah seems like my little helper that's taller than me <laughs> anyway just as my helper and he's a young guy in the neighborhood that comes and he helps me clean sometimes he helps me film goes hunting with me i have another cameraman who who does it more often his name's david i will try and introduce him another time so justin asked me a good question thought i'd answer it uh to you guys rather than just tell justin so he asked me so what do you just feed her as much as she wants and so when I'm training a baby mink, that's exactly what I do. So a baby mink who's young and growing still, I feed them as much as they want every single meal. Now I only feed two meals a day, tipped by this age. You know, when they're younger, I feed more. But when they're this age, which she's roughly 11 weeks old, I feed only two meals a day. So the space of time in between the first meal and the second meal is enough that they're not gonna get grossly obese the majority of the time. So if I fed her three times a day as much as she wanted, she would start getting pretty darn fat. As an adult mink, however, feeding as much as they want to eat twice a day will lead to obesity. So I do not do that with an adult mink, but a young growing mink, especially while they're in training, I just let them eat as much as they want every meal, which is twice a day. Um, once she starts to put on the pounds, you'll, well pounds, grams, <laughs> or maybe their desire to eat is dropping. They're, they're not as sharp as they used to be. 
then I'll start to restrict the amount of food they eat per meal. But as long as their food drive stays good and sharp and their body weight isn't getting out of control, I'll just let them eat as much as they want every single meal. And you know, I'm sure there's probably some adults that have a high enough metabolism, they might be able to do that for their whole life, but I've never seen one that I can think of anyway. Uh, the majority of mink, if they have a good food drive and a healthy body, they're gonna start to put on too much weight if you continue that process beyond their uh, being a juvenile. So you just keep an eye on that. Hey, are they getting a little too chubby? Or is their desire to eat starting to drop? See, some mink, they'll just gain weight, but their desire to eat won't necessarily drop that much. Other mink will barely gain weight, but their desire to eat will drop. So you have to pay attention to both. How much body fat are they carrying? And what is their reaction at food time? Are they eh, complacent, barely that hungry? Or are they sharp and just obsessed with it? Well, maybe you're not feeding enough if they're obsessed with it. But if they've got a good, healthy, sharp food drive, but not over the top, you're probably doing it just right, assuming their body weight is also correct. Um, and you gotta keep an eye on both. Like I said, some mink are just gluttons, and even when obese, they still wanna eat. So you have to be aware of that and not overfeed them. Being obese is not healthy, and with an athlete like what I use for hunting and fishing, it slows them down a lot. So when obese, there's a lot of disadvantages, both from a health standpoint, as well as a youthfulness standpoint. They can't fit in as tight of holes, they're not able to swim as fast after fish, you know, things like that. So yeah, Vila looks just right. Um, she's got a full belly, so it's not the ideal time to show you, but let me see here. Here, Vila. Yeah, bad time to show you. She's got a bit of a full belly, but if you look down here at her back legs, you can see she's not carrying any extra weight. Her tummy's pretty full. She actually ate quite a bit right there. But her back legs, you can see there, she's not carrying a lot of fat. So she's nice and lean. I can just let her eat as much as she wants twice a day, no problem. Um, other mink, like I said, depending on their age and depending on their metabolism, that might not be the case. And you really need to customize your feeding schedule to the specific mink you're working with. Anyway, thanks for watching, guys. Hope you enjoyed it. We'll show you more next time.